if you want your mixes to compete these days, it's got to be loud enough. Like, you can't have your mix or your final master coming on after another pro record and have it sounding weak and wimpy and quiet by comparison. So, you know, loudness is something that I really struggled with and, and couldn't get for many years in my mixes until I discovered clipping, which is really the way to do it. So I'm going to show you how to actually use clipping in your mix to get the loudness you need without totally destroying your mix. So like I said, I struggled with this for a while and what I used to do and what was basically taught to me at bigger studios and internships and everything that I had read and seen to that point was that you use limiting and the Waves L2 was kind of like the standard limiter that people would throw on their master fader to try and get the loudness up. So basically you would you would just do this, you'd put it on here and then you'd pull this down you do something like that and to me it's like okay it's louder now but it sounds worse and just to really show you how much worse it sounds let me just volume match it here probably have to do about that much limiting to kind of get in the ballpark of pro records. Now, watch when I AB this. Listen to how much worse the mix sounds, specifically the drums. Kick and snare, they just get completely pushed back in the mix. I'll do one more quick AB, listen to the kick and snare and how much further back they get pushed and how much attack and impact is lost. So obviously that sucks for pretty much any genre, but especially, you know, rock and heavy stuff like this. So I was stuck doing this for a bunch of years and I didn't like it. I knew it was ruining my mixes, but you know, when I was sending a reference track out to a band or something, like I wanted it to sound at least in the ballpark. So it wasn't such a drastic difference. And then I would send it out to a mastering engineer for the final master. Um, now that was until one of the guys who was kind of mentoring me back then, he mentioned clipping. I think I had said something about loudness and the struggle there. And he said, oh yeah, you can't use limiting like that. It's going to destroy your drums. You need to clip it instead. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I had no idea. I'd never heard of anyone using clipping purposely in the mix, let alone as like a mastering tool. And so he explained it to me uh, as basically like, yeah, a limiter is gonna, you know, there's attack and release that comes into that. It's literally just turning down your transients. Hence, you lose them and you lose the punch and impact of the drums. But if you're clipping, you know, you have a big transient like this. And if you just kind of like shave off the, the top of it, the peak of it, well, it happens so fast, you like you actually don't hear it at all. Um, so he, he said, as long as you're only clipping kind of the top peaks of the drums, like mostly the snare, well, you're going to get your mix a lot louder and you're not going to sacrifice any of the impact and punch and balance of your overall mix. So, you know, I took that advice and I was like, okay, what, how does this work? You know, I didn't have any clipping plugins back then. Uh, I didn't even know they existed. So I just literally took my trim plugin in Pro Tools and just did this. Again, let me turn this down for you. I mean, instantly, that's way better than the L2. I mean, I can instantly push it pretty loud there, and it's definitely in the ballpark. You know, maybe not quite final master level, but in that ballpark, great for sending a reference mix to bands like that, and that's what I would do. It didn't destroy my mix, and it got the loudness. So I literally just did that for years, just using the trim plugin. Now, I think we can graduate a step beyond that, though, because if you're thinking about clipping and getting the mix loud using clipping, well, ultimately in the end, you only want to shave off those drum peaks. And you can do that, but if you're only shaving off the drum peaks, well, why wouldn't you just do that earlier in the mix, like 
actually on the drum tracks themselves. And so that was the next step of learning how to use clipping. And look, I tried a bunch of different clipping plugins through the years. I'm not going to name them all here, but I, I don't like any of them, to be honest. So they're either overcomplicated, like way too many options and controls. Like this is literally just clipping, like just clip the sound. I just showed you how to do it with a trim plug and you don't even need to buy anything. So they'd either be too complicated or they would be super ugly and not user friendly, or they would maybe lack like any visual meter or anything so that you could see what you're doing. And so, um, I just decided to build my own plugin for clipping because I've been frustrated at frustrated at it. <laughs> I've been frustrated with clipping plugins for long enough. And now that I have a team who can build plugins, I just wanted to do it myself. So I'm going to show you the plugin I made and how to use it. So since we've already been talking a little bit about clipping on the mix bus, let's start there and I'll show you how the plugin works. So here it is. It's called BSA Clipper by my plugin company, Black Salt Audio. Now let's check it out. So it's dead simple clipping with a good meter and something cool that we did is instead of using kind of red lines or, or red lights to show the amount of clipping, that kind of gives you the sense that you're doing something wrong, right? So I wanted this to be more of a, a usable creative tool that you can feel good about using and feels natural. And so we decided not to use any red lights for this. So it's dead simple. You just use this slider to set the ceiling of when you want it to start clipping. And then if you want to crank the gain up and get it louder, you use this knob here. So you could use this on the mix bus the way I just showed you here. Even in a mastering capacity if you wanted. But let's dive in and see how we can use this on individual tracks because it's more effective uh, as a mixer. So let's start on drum bus. So what I want to do is basically just chop off kind of the very loudest hits on the drum bus just to control it, just to make sure I don't have any rogue crazy transients popping out into my mix bus compression and you know into a final mastering chain so we'll just bring this down maybe turn it up a tiny bit The crazy thing about clipping is that you're actually setting a lower uh, ceiling for the for the peak level of the audio, but since you're just shaving off those top peaks, you can actually have a lower level in the meter, but a louder perceived sound, right? Like if you look at the drum bus here on the meter with the plug-in bypass, look at where it's clipping. Right up there, right? Now just to exaggerate this, I'll bring it down Turn this up. Now you can see I'm peaking actually way lower. You know, it's a hard ceiling right down here, but it actually sounds louder. So personally, you know, I don't go super aggressive with this. I will just do a little bit on my drum bus. There we go. And then I would also do it on a parallel compression bus here. Just copy it over. Also brings up some of the body of the drum as well. And then you can even do this on individual tracks like a snare track. So if we take this snare sample here, you know, if we wanted more loudness and body out of this snare, let's try it. So just by doing that, we've made the snare sound way louder 
while it's actually just peaking at a lower level on the meter. So that is how you're gonna get way more loudness out of the final mix. And this all kind of adds up in the chain where you're limiting the dynamic range in terms of the peak levels. Um, and that's gonna enable you to get that loudness in your final mix in the final master without totally destroying your punch, destroying your transients. Well, you, you kind of are destroying your transients actually on purpose, but it still sounds punchy. And you can actually get away with quite a bit of this. And even once you start to hear the, the distortion, you don't have your genres, like it actually kind of adds kind of an energy and an edge to it that is even desirable sometimes. Like, let me show you here. Like that still doesn't really sound bad. That's how you do it. That's how you get the loudness without destroying your drums, it's by clipping. Something that mastering engineers have been doing with hardware uh, clippers and like literally just clipping their converters coming in um, to get that loudness. And this is something that we can now do in the box on individual tracks using plugins like this one. So I don't know if you're like me and maybe, I mean, maybe this is a, a revelation to you like it was for me many years ago where it's just like a light bulb. It's like, wow, finally I can easily solve this loudness problem. Or maybe you've already been doing this and you've been using other uh, clipping plugins if you're happy with them cool if you're not if you're like me and you think that they're ugly and not really user friendly or over complicated and you want something just dead simple that's going to do the job um, then you might like this plugin again it's called bsa clipper by my company black salt audio now if you want to get this plugin when it comes out then definitely click here and subscribe to the black salt audio youtube channel we'll publish some more videos uh, showing the plugin and we'll of course announce it when it's out There'll be a 14 day free trial and also a nice uh, little special launch discount for a limited time when it releases in a few days. And if you're watching this after the original publishing of this video, well, the plugin's probably out already. So just go to blacksaltaudio.com, grab the trial or just pick up the plugin. You've seen how it works. It's simple, it's nice to use, it feels good. And uh, I really hope you like it. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something about clipping about loudness dynamics in the mix that's going to help you solve your problems like it really helped me when I discovered this and hopefully this plugin helps you do it nicely all right thanks for watching take care